So our next speaker is a lecturer, counselor, facilitator, and a trainer. He has an experience of more than 15 years in doing all this. He is employed by the University of Dar es Salaam for the past 15 years. He holds a PhD in psychology and his research areas are on social psychology, counseling and relationships. Apart from being a lecturer, author, coacher and a counselor, he has trained as well as providing psychological services to a number of corporate organizations. I'll mention a few. Some include Vodacom, TCC, AAR, TBL, just to mention a few. He's a media personality with massive influence in the urban and rural population in East Africa, Africa and abroad. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Dr. Chris Mauki. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we all raise? May we all raise? May we all raise? I don't want us to be so down. I want to be active. May we all raise. Not, hands, not, not our hands. May we all raise. May we all. Can you shake the hands of your neighbor a little bit? Okay. I love you. I love you. And then you can go back to your seat. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I would like to take this opportunity to really thank God for the gift of life and gift of energy. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kimambo. I happened to listen to your message when you're finalizing and I remember a lot of anointing and anointed speeches and sermons when you were coming at USCF when I was in undergrad at the University of Dar es Salaam. God bless you so much my brother. Thank you Pastor Nduye and other assistant pastors for inviting uh, me. Uh, the giant killer is becoming a big event. I saw it last year, I saw it uh, several times, and being invited is uh, it's an honor, it's an honor. Thank you very, very much. I, I just landed from Arusha, I was in an overnight at uh, Calvary Temple yesterday, and I thank God for the energy to be with you, and a few hours to sleep at Faya because I have another event uh, till midnight, but one thing I have learned when God gives you energy as a youth, make sure you use it at the maximum. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There will be a time where you will really desire to go out there and the bones will say you don't go anywhere. But when you have energy, please use that. Open with me in the books of um, the book of uh, First Timothy. The book of First Timothy. First Timothy, chapter 4, verse 12. Chapter 4, verse 12. And I'm going to talk about, uh, I, th I think uh, there will be some projection of my, my slides. Um, but then I'm talking about the personal and relationship struggles. The personal and relationship struggles that youth experience and how this struggle affect or impact their effectiveness or their youth. The personal and relationship struggles behind closed doors, behind the curtains, you know, the struggles that we, we, we meet and we face 
when Pastor Nduya is not there, when Dr. Mkimambo is not there, when Pastor Shalua is not there, in the corners there when we leave, you know, we don't speak to anybody. Those struggles, they are our secrets. Sometimes we even think that God doesn't know them. Let's talk about these struggles today. And I want to speak to you about the letter that Apostle Paul, uh, Apostle Paul is writing to Timothy. And why I'm picking Timothy? Because he was a young guy. He was raised at the age whereby culture of Hebrews and Israel, he was not respected if you're not aged. If you don't have age, you don't have number of days. That it was the era where Timothy was working. He was full of anointing, super intelligent in the word, in the doctrine. And Paul knew that this guy is full of oil. But he knew one of the obstacles that this guy will be facing. One of the struggles that this guy will be facing is people will despise him because of the age. He was younger. He knew a lot, but he was younger. Paul had to write a lot and tell people where he was sending Timothy to tell them and explaining a lot about Timothy so that people can welcome Timothy because he knew Timothy had substance, but he was younger. He was young. But now, Timo, Paul is telling Timothy at verse, uh, chapter 4, verse, verse 12, the verse that we all know, let no one despise your youth. But be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Biblia Kiswahili inasema, mtu awai yote asudharao. I like the English trans interpretation or translation. It say, let no one despise your youth. What does that mean? If you take it from direct from English, let no one despise your youth means kamwe usimruhusu mtu yoyote au dharau jana wako. What does that mean? If somebody despise your youth in any way because of the struggles that you're facing or because of anything, give it a name. It is not about us who despise you. It's about, it about you who opened the door for us to despise you. Sometimes and many times people complain wana niona vipi sio wana niwaza vipi sio kanino na niona hivi it's not about wao kukuona it's about how you open that door for them to see you that way let no one let no one despise your youth let's talk about youth struggles personal struggles that we go through you know those struggles that you, you go through and when you pray, you don't pray loud. Because if people hear that, those struggles that you face them, that's only you and God, who knows? Those struggles that sometimes when you pray, you ask for forgiveness to God. Personal struggles. And I, 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 I am a young guy. I understand. We've, we've gone through that. We understand. You're going through the, the same. You are a brother or you are a sister. It doesn't matter. You are going through struggles. Zingile za kuletewa, nyingile za kujitakia. Uli jingiza uko mwenye. Na ukisha jikuta uko za God, remove me from this trouble. And come to realize you, you cause it by yourself. Personal and relationship struggles behind closed doors, behind the curtains. And you know, in life, there's this friend, eh, that this friend who knows you a lot more than anybody. Sometimes, even if he does weird things, you can't let him go, you can't delete them because you know they know a lot about you, they know your struggles, they know your issues. And you protect them because you don't want them to speak to people about you. One of the struggles that I want to start with, which is not my slide, the Holy Spirit gave me after I prepared this. 
which is not per se relationship, but is more general that through counseling, being a counselor, a professional counselor for years, I came to realize a lot of youth are facing it. Is the struggle to discover your purpose. The struggle to discover your purpose. How many are students here? Can I see your hand? Students. Perfect. Let me give you this reality. I am very much sure some of you are in universities. Or some of, you are, some of you are in secondary school. But I'm telling you, number of you, you're studying something that you're not sure who you will become. And I know some of you are listening to me. You are in a certain course at the university. You don't know what made you being there. But you are sure that you are there. Was this an accident? It just happened there. And inside you, you have this threat. You have this insecurity. You have this fear. Who shall I become? Because mimi nasumea bikum. Marketing. Ntakuwa marketer. Even I penda ikitu. I don't like this thing. This is not my thing. And many of you are falling in that category because we do not have gu career guidance and counseling. Some of you, your dad doesn't know what you're studying. And when you're explaining to them, they don't even know. But one thing they are sure, you are at the university. And that you are alive. But this is trouble. You don't, we don't tell people that I'm not so much sure. Yes, I believe in Jesus, but I'm not so much sure who will I become. What will I do? Am I happy doing this course? Am I happy studying this? Am I happy being a doctor? Is this something I've ever dreamt about? Wengine tumekuwa influenced na marafiki zetu. Tuliingia A level tukajikuta tuko nao chuo, waka opt in na ukaenda huko. Kila kitu unakiwa na kigeni. Majukuta wameingia kwenye course nyingine ngumu. When people are sleeping, you're not sleeping, you're praying because of Mungu na toboa hapa. But you don't tell anybody. Because you kuna wale vipanga na wewe unataka kuonekana kama wewe kipanga. Unasema kwenye msafara wa mamba na kenge wapo sasa unakuta kenge ndio wewe. You can't push it. And you can't tell them my, my brothers and sisters this thing is killing me. Sapo na yona hivi kabisa reality. You can't tell them. Unamoft. Unatia moyo kidogo kwamba tafakarini Mungu aliko. But gia yendi mbele na wala irudi nyuma vitu vina vigumu and your struggle is eating you inside your heart unasema kama mwaka wa kwanza tu ngoma iko hivi hivi wa pili inakuwaaje wa tatu inakuwaaje when you go to sleep when you go to pray when other people they see themselves in the words operating people living their dreams as gynecologists and surgeon you don't see yourself you see yourself in supplementary you see yourself repeating a year kuna watu kwenye mikesha hawakosi sio kama anakuja kuombea nchi anaona kabisa mungu mimi sito boy bora nikae chachu but at the end of the day Icho kitu yenyewe unataka kusoma you cannot connect it with the purpose you cannot connect it with your destiny you don't see the connection between what you're studying and what will make me happy you don't see it the purpose I meet a lot of people they work in good salaries jobs and tasks but they tell me yes I get money but I'm not happy what does that mean? They have not connected to their purpose. Psychology tells me anything that you do that connects you to your purpose, you must be happy. The Japanese call it ikigai. 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 When what you're doing is what makes you happy. And it is what the world needs. And it is what that gives you money. 
Now, many of us, what we want to do is not the world, what the world wants. And what the world wants is not what you do. And what you do is not what makes you happy. And what makes you happy, the world doesn't need it. That's why we hear a lot of mental health challenges. Because people are living in an uncertain world. They don't understand their future. They don't understand their purpose. They don't understand who they will become. They don't understand what am I doing to make me myself happy. The only thing that you are very much sure is that I'm a, I'm a he or she. You don't need to ask anybody. You're sure of that. But somebody tells you, what about your future? Who do you want to become? What is it that you will do to make yourself happy? Do you think the job that will do, you will do that will give you money is exactly what makes you happy? You can't have that answer. Purpose. Somebody asked me, what is a purpose? What is an ikigai? I explain purpose is when the pain meets the passion or when the passion meets the pain. Whenever the passion meets the pain, that's where we have a purpose. What does that mean? When you meet something that when you don't do it, you feel pain. And when you do it, you feel so much passion. Where there's an intermingle is where we call purpose. Ikigai. In Japanese. So we all face struggles, you know. We all face struggles. Let me go to some relationship struggle. But somebody asked me, somebody, there was a time that I was talking somewhere, and somebody asked me, why do these personal struggles, these relationship struggles, hurt a lot? Why is it so painful? You can't tell anybody, but it's so painful. It's so hurting in your heart. Why is it? Especially relationship struggles. And I remember when I was studying psychology, I was told the heart of a man, the heart of a human being, it is occupied 60% by things related to relationship. 60%. All other things are occupied 40%. 60% of your heart, things related to relationship. That is why you can easily find a lady, she cried for only one day when she lost her father. But she wants to commit suicide when somebody says it's over. You find a guy, he cried two days when he got supplementary. But he is frustrated to the extent that he is discontinued. Which is which in a where is where? Heart. Heart. Relationships. Relationships. Some of us we know. When you have somebody you love in this church. And they start to behave badly. You can't even go to that church. You can't even go to that church. He cannot, sus he cannot stay, he's not confident enough to come in the church whereby that guy is there or that lady is there. Relationship issues. And I tell you, you cannot image as a giant killer. You cannot image as a self-leader, an independent leader, or image, even lead other people if you cannot overcome these struggles. You can't. You must be able to overcome these struggles. Let me give you another struggle. The struggles to know our differences. We are facing that struggle. The struggle to discover our differences. The struggle to discover our differences. Sometimes we're in a relationship with people where, whether in school or discussion groups, our college mate, 
or in relationships like intimate relationship. I know some of you are in universities and you're in relationships at least. You have somebody who says I love you. He tells you when I look at you I see a wife. And when you're told those words your ears becomes like a scorpion. Because somebody said when I look at you you, 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 you seem to be a wife material. Not knowingly, he told the same sentence to other five guys, ladies. You are the six. You are in a queue. But then when you are in this relationship, we have a struggle to know the differences. How is he behaving and how is she behaving? How is he expected and what is expected out of she? We don't know. We don't know where it is complementarity is and where competition is. Instead of completing each other in that relationship, you compete each other because you don't know the differences. We struggle. I have a lot of people who come to my office and we talk about the relationship issues and you come to realize the only problem they are facing, they don't understand the differences. They don't understand what naturally and biologically expected from a man. And what is naturally and biologically expected out of the lady. And many people go with this ignorance to the marriage. They fight a lot. They quarrel a lot. Some of them, they even lead to divorces. Because they don't know. You don't know that a woman is created being emotional. That's why they become angry any times. Even sometimes they don't know if they are angry, but they are angry. They are created emotionally. Not me. Men are not so much created emotionally. We are not emotionally led. Women are emotionally led. That's why they, cre they cry in something that makes them sad. And they cry in something that makes them happy. You give them a ring for engagement, they cry. You tell them it's over, they cry. You surprise them. They cry. You tell them the surprise is cancelled, they cry. And imagine you live with somebody that you don't know. And you got, ladies, you don't know that this guy are created as non-emotional beings. They have very less emotional. You know a man can hurt you. They don't even know if they've hurt you. And unavonuna, ukisubiri kwamba akijua umenuna atajigundua. Anashanga hivi umenuna kumbi miko siju kwa umenuna. And the world moves on. They are like that. That's why a lot of ladies are crying in relationship because you are teasing somebody who is not emotional. Kule mtani kuna kiswahili wanasema ukiwa unajua unakaa kwa nyumba kio usitukua ugombi wa mawe. And you know this guy is not emotional. He doesn't care. We face these struggles, relationship struggles. Dr. Chris, I don't know what happened. I, he doesn't talk to me. I don't know what happened. There's the failure and the struggles in knowing the differences. I know girls face a lot of struggles. Whenever you have this guy, you pray together. He's in Pendua. And you're in a relationship. But you find a number of times he's creating circumstances that if you're becoming weak, you will have sex. Then it was just the devil. It was just to pray for me, please. Why? Because that's how men are created. They lust with what goes in their mind. Especially through their eyes. That's why every scene in the Bible, the Bible says, Mpingeni shetani atawakimbia. But when it comes to lust, it says, flee. But some of us, we think we are so spiritual next to Elijah. When it comes to lust, we want to mpinga shetani atawakimbia. You need to know the differences. We are created naturally that way. Don't struggle much in those areas. Just understand that we created different. Respect the difference. Struggle number 
Number three, which is number two in my slides, but it's number three. The struggle of knowing the reason of coming together. That's a relationship struggle. You are in relationship with some people. Then you're thinking, why are we together? You go in WhatsApp groups, you are there, and sometimes you ask yourself, why am I here? I see some, sometimes we get in some WhatsApp groups, and you come to that, if you group with Anini, if you go to Anini, Silielewi. Those are relationships that you don't know the cause, you don't know the purpose. But some of us get into serious, intimate relationship. I know for some of you who are in universities, and you, you are struggling to know the purpose. Why are we together? Why am I with this guy? You know, sometimes there are some people we accept them in our life to come to realize to me we accept emotionally. Anafanya nini kwanza? Afu nakuta yendo anapenda. Alafu wala. I have young guys who called me a month ago for a counseling. The guy seems to be on fire. And he wants to propose this lady. So they have, we have done one session for the lady, and another session with the guy. So we want to do the session together. So the lady is texting me and said, Chris, don't need even, we don't even, I don't even in a session. The more we go, I don't see this guy in my heart. But when I talk with the guy, the guy seems, he just wants to be, to go and get introduced to the family of this lady. One side, there's life. Another side, there is death. One person understands the reason of being together and the other one doesn't even know why are we together. That is a struggle. And sometimes when we relate with people, we don't even ask ourselves, why are we together? Why do you decide to, to, to have me? Why are you looking at me as a potential person for your life? We don't ask those questions. We don't ask ourselves those questions. Why sometimes we don't ask ourselves those questions? So we go by faith. And it is a struggle. You, you don't share, you can't tell somebody that. But it's something that you're going through. But then sometimes you go through a struggle and when you're, when you're thinking of a relationship, one day you will have a relationship even if you don't, you don't have it now. What do I need? I face a lot of young guys who come to me. Like, what do I need? I don't know what I need. That's why I jump from one relationship to another. Some guys, I call them relationship tourists. Mkute kwenye worship sasa waivu. Ah, anashusha upa kwenye kuona. Hala hajui alie. These are struggles, real struggles. What do I need in life? What kind of a guy do I need? What kind of a lady do I need? There is a friend of mine who is a good minister, very good minister of the gospel. I remember now he, he's married, he has two kids. He struggled a lot when, when he was about to get married because every time when I talk to him, he said, you know what, Chris, I don't know when will I get married. Why? I said, because I have almost five ladies that I love them so much, but I want their combination in one. He was telling me, I want a woman who pray like mercy. But I want a woman who is morphologically like Joyce. I want a woman who is tender-hearted and kind like so-and-so. And I told that guy, you need to be an artist so you can draw one. Because you can't have a spatial, you can't have that combo. You can't. Sasa alivu oa sasa. Mama Amtumish came on. He was out of those five. 
I'm telling you. Kila ukimkuta kwenye huduma yuko mwenyewe. Ayuko na mamtumishi. Watu wachache ndo namjua mama mtumishi. Sisi tunamjua. Watu wamjui. Akiwa na ubiri bwana siwe mke wangu anawasalimia sana. Wangapi mmepokea salamu? Si unajua salamu zetu eh? Wangapi mmepokea salamu? Uzushi tu. <laughs> Mnanipa salamu gani nimpelekee mama mtumishi mbona hujaji naye? And you make that mistake at the end of the day you go in marriage my friend you live by faith throughout. That's why sometimes we change our tune. Every time we nataka yes waje, yes unjo, yes wafi because everything is eh, an issue. You you failed on the struggle of what do i need my friend and my brother and my sister let me tell you in life even if you have a very great ministry a very great job if you fail this struggle of who do i need to be in life you will struggle throughout i see a lot of people are promoted wanaka of sin paka satano sita usiku as if they love that job but they don't love that job kifuatacho i tv sio kizuri so they can't go home they are not happy going home because somewhere somewhere they feel that struggle of what do i need in life who do i need to have in my life who is there to make me happy and it's very challenging because there's a lot of struggle sometimes you come in the university in dar es salaam you're in a poor background and there's this guy who comes because of their material and wealthy You look at them you say amejibu mahombi amejibu kwa wakati soon as you go in unakuja kugundua sio ombi ni kitu kingine na wakati huo ndio ulishaambiwa mpaka kifo kitakapo This woman came in my life, in, in my office one day he say you know Dr Chris they say mpaka kifo there are sometimes secretly I tell God 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 if death is the only solution do something <laughs> There was this woman who came in my in my office there was a time he told me uh, Chris my husband he was working at the auditor general and he was so senior and was paid well but we had a lot of quarrels in our relationship and we dated at the university i was manipulated influenced by my friends and I accepted that guy he came to realize i never loved him so we dwelled in marriage for many years and we have kids so this guy got sick akalazo mwimbili i met dr chris you know zile meza za pembeni ya ya kitanda ya hospitali kule tunaweka nini themos vile vile meza vidogo vidogo vile so ofisi ni kwake walikuwa watu wakija na watu wa jumuiya na watu wa church wanaleta kadi zimeandikwa get well soon get well soon unaweka pembeni asma dr chris alikuwa akiondoka tu hiyo group na chukua zile kadi na chana wanakuja group nyingine tena jumuiya au wafanyakazi wenzake wanaita makadi makubwa wameandikwa get well soon wametoa themos wameka pembeni wameka zile kadi zinamzunguka wakiondoka na chana yuko kwenye drips ni kama mzee woman kwa nini zichana akaniambia sange get well ya kwa story ndio kuambia mimi mwanzo mpaka mwisho nimekupa story ya maisha yangu mpaka hapa tulipo yange get well ningeishi vipi mimi then i came to realize that woman was happy i learned something that not every widow is unhappy i'm telling you leader kwenye kanisa moja nikakuta kuna kwaya wajane wana furaha kuna watu wengine wanatamani kuwa kwenye ile kwaya sasa kigezo cha kuingia lazima mmewako fanya nini afe wengine tu kwa ile ile wanacheza wajawa wa mama wamenenepa unajua hapa kuna mtu kuna struggle ilibishinda mtu hapa wa mama wajane not every mjane is happy 
And I'm telling you guys, if you cannot overcome these struggles when you're young, it will reach a time where there, will, there won't be any room. I was invited to Kigamboni, to one of these churches I don't want to mention. They had a conference for widows. In that big hall, there were almost a thousand widows. And men, like Mimi, I want a video, very few men, very, very few men. And when they were inviting me to go to the podium to speak, what can I be a doctor? Kamo meanda ujumbe ulewa mungu ni mume. Oh, jani, badilish. Give us energetic message. How we can be entrepreneurs and make money. How we can be happy. Situtia moyo. Na kiukweli nikwa meanda uo. I had to change my friend. So when we were having lunch, they told me, we are in this four-star hotel by the beach. Some of us, this is the first time. When these guys were there, no beach. No luxury. You breastfeed kids. But now we are happy. And I was say sad. Kama mtu angewambia wale wanaume wao kumbe mmeondoka ndio watu wanafurahia huko sasa struggles another struggle another struggle it's a struggle to initiate a relationship now that is a big struggle to wapendwa especially guys wakakampo the struggle to initiate relationship. Waka kwa kipendwa, anaheza kumpenda mdada mme, akakatu wapo, anamukubusha, maombi. Tufungi. And this lady is creating every conducive environment for this guy to speak something. And the guy doesn't know nothing. He only knows Psalm 23. Bwana ndia mchungaji wangu. So I meet a lot of ladies who are believers and they said, Christian, he doesn't speak anything. I like to say, I want words. I want words. Wakaka, I think you can say, you can say, and you can say, you can say, and you can say, you can say, the struggle to initiate. Some of us, we can be good at presentation when in the class, but we cannot initiate relationship. You cannot tell somebody words. You cannot say anything. You cannot say anything. That's why sometimes when things doesn't go well, and you come to realize what happened, but come to realize the lady needed commitment. She needed you to speak something. And you cannot, you, you were not able to do that. It is a struggle. Clients wangu flani wana they're in a relationship and the believers but this lady I was talking to a separate session and the guy at a separate session. This lady is telling me Chris, I want to hear I want to listen, I want to hear something from him. Then I said ah, I thought he said anything he didn't say anything. So the, everything when we met and we had a kitimoto, he was talking about the event that he went. Telling me a lot about the event. And I was like this guy doesn't talk anything. So I call that guy and say, my brother, Moron Yangusha, say, Dr. Chris, write for me some few lines. I'm my, my friend. <laughs> it's a struggle. Ukifika point, mwanaume mkwambia, mwanaume mzako niandikie. Maji ya bimfika wapi? It's a struggle. And you know, you cannot tell somebody that I have somebody I feel, but I can't speak. You can't, and you will never tell anybody. Even if the pastor comes and says, you will never be able to say that. You're dying with it. The struggle to initiate, the struggle whether to accept or not, the struggle whether to say yes or not. The struggle to get confirmation. Is this a true guy? 
Many ladies will just say, Naomba, Swiri, Nimekobia, Naomba. Nipe muda. And deep down your heart, you know, Kabisa, this guy is not a candidate. And you're telling them, Naomba. Nana kakula na mkumbusha mungu. There's a struggle. Because of time, let me go to another struggle. The struggle to manage the body. Now let's talk the reality, my brothers and sisters. Especially men. We are living in this body. The body is full of energy. We have a struggle to manage the body. We have emotions. We have feelings. I have good number of my clients who are believers who are in pornography addiction and masturbation addiction. And some of them, I go to their church. I see them, they're ministering. I don't blame them. They have a struggle. I tell them, let's come and talk. You cannot tell anybody that you're, struggle, you're struggling with masturbation. You can't. The bad thing is, there's no any trademark there's no any symbol that when you have a masturbation to talk with you, we have addicted. We have addicted addiction and masturbation. I have a good number of those guys. University students, non-university students, corporate guys. You're masturbating. You have a struggle. We have a struggle to manage the body. If you can't subdue that body in the power of the Holy Spirit, if you can't subdue that and command the word of God to, to rule over, I'm telling you the struggle is real. The struggle is real. Two years ago, I had a client who was one of the guys who was leading the fellowship at the university and it was a, those guys who went to university when they were married, or, or, or married already. Then when he graduated, got a job, then he went somewhere far from the family. So because he loved God, he doesn't want to do fornication, so he started doing masturbation. Managing the body. He thought that is a way. Then, no wonder, sooner or later, he became addicted. Who brought the case to me was a wife who realized that my husband is addicted to masturbation. Young couple, the guy is addicted with masturbation. And it's one of the very bad addiction. It's not like alcohol. When you're addicted to alcohol, you go to rehab. They will detox you. They'll give you some drips. You'll be detoxicated. Then you will have, you'll go back to... It's a masturbation, my friend. They, they, it takes a long time to deal with the mind. Until when you come out of the masturbation. We are addicted with pornography. Guys are here. The phone is full of gospel music, but that's full of pornography. They're all interacting together. You have good worship songs there. You have good ministers there, but you also have a few photos and videos that you, you watch them when nobody else is close to you. Because how they know you is not how you know yourself. Struggle. It's a struggle. We thank God that He forgives even our sacred sins. But it's a true struggle. Managing our bodies. Managing our bodies. Managing our bodies. So let's, let me finish with the impact. How does this struggle impact the youth? How does this struggle impact the effectiveness of your leadership? How does them become a stumbling block to your desire to be a leader? To your desire to be somebody? To the desire to be a good person somewhere there in the marketplace? How does this struggle impact you. These struggles are real, my brothers and sisters. Yes, some of them, nobody will know them and nobody understand them. Maybe you have never shared them with anybody, but let me tell you, they have impact on you. They can impact your future. They can impact your destiny. They can impact your character. They can impact your 
ability to sustain, your mental ability, your cognitive ability, they can impact you. One of the impact is on the confidence. If you get time and you go to YouTube, with my YouTube channel, I know some of you have been watching a lot. There's a lot of videos there. There are a lot of topics that talk about confidence issues. Ujasir. And one of the topics is called confidence killers. Vitu vinavuwa ujasir. These struggles, these struggles are some of the killers of our confidence. You happen to be a very confident young lady. You happen to be a very confident young man. But slowly you wonder your confidence is diminishing somewhere. Your confidence is vanishing like a flame. Where is it going? These struggles kills your confidence. Because you're not so much sure if you're forgiven. If you're not sure if somebody doesn't know about what is your story, you smell a scandal. You become uncertain. You become insecure. You become unconfident. Another impact is self-guilty. Guilty conscious. Self-condemnation. Kila saa unajiisi na shitakiwa. Kila wakita watu mbele na unaenda. Kila wakita kwa sababu you're not so much sure if you're forgiven. You're not even so much sure if the blood of Jesus is working on you. Because every time there is a finger that is pointing on you. Like you, you, you. Uwa mkono wako kulia uwa. Uwa. Una usano mzuri sana na sabuni. Uwa mkono uwa. And something is telling you. It's like somebody is, somebody was telling me, Chris, hata kulala kwangu kumekua impacted. I cannot sleep because ni kilala too. Somebody is telling me, wewe, wewe. Najifanya mokoka wewe. Wewe, wewe, wewe. Guilty. And let me tell you guys, self-condemnation and guilty is one of the factors that takes people to depression. And if you never understood, I will teach psychology here, 65% of people who undergo depression, they commit suicide. That's why you see the rate of suicide of young guys is going higher. Why? People have self-condemnation. They're guilty. Guilty of the things that we don't know. Guilty. They're walking and they're scared of their shadow because of guilty. Guilty in a tessa, guilty in a umiza. Because nobody knows what you're feeling, but you know yourself that things are not well. I am condemning myself. What are you supposed to do? Start by forgiving yourself. When the blood of Jesus has done his work, you are supposed to forgive yourself. And trusting that the blood of Jesus has cleansed you, despite of any heaviness and intensity of the, of the sin. Another impact is the delay in committed relationship. That's why we have a lot of guys nowadays. They are delaying to get married. We have a lot of sisters. They are scared to get married. You put. They are scared of getting married. Because of the struggles. How I say me, like you know, struggle. Because the struggle mdo unakwenda. You put. Na kisha fika kama ni mdale miyaka kake salasina mbili, akienda wakamambia kuna dalili za fibroid. Kuisha bari yake. Na madaktari wanakambia, hapa bana dawa ya kwanza, kabla haya mafibroid ya jijewuka kuwa kansa. Beba bimba. Na madaktari wako hivyo, hawa kambia bebe na nani, utajua we mwenyewe. Ila beba nini? Mimba. Ukitembea hile sauti na kuja tu beba mimba, beba mimba, beba mimba. Ukupanda gari, beba mimba. Ukiwa na mwangalea lekchara wako, unakumbuka tu beba mimba, beba mimba. Ukiwana mchungaji huko wapa mbele, unakumbuka tu mimba. <laughs> people are delaying and get committed relationship. Many people, last week I was asked by different media houses, kwa nini watu wana chelewa kuo? Takuwa, they are scared. Struggles. But another impact is the rise of single parenting. So struggles mekua nyingi. Watu wanachilewa kuowa. Wanachilewa kuolewa. Mwisho siku inakuja force. 
na intensity ya jamii pale mtoto kuna hata mtoto hata kusingiziwa unabaki unasema wataniona mimi mgonjwa ndio unaamua kupata the rising of single parenting in a community is because of these struggles na kama hujawahi ku connect the rising of single parenting is highly connected with the rise of lgbtq i a plus plus sasa wewe ni mtu wa rohoni jifunze kuvitazama hivi vitu kama connected usivitazame kama different entities the rising of single parenting is highly connected with the rise of lgbtqia plus plus where does this come from struggles behind the closed doors but another impact is the rising of distrust and mistrust issues now people are dating and people are in relationship but they don't trust each other sasa hivi watu wakikaa kidogo hivi ukienda kuoga watu wamekuwa kila mtu KK security and you go with your phone everywhere mama mmoja kanambia mauki zamani alikuwa anaenda na simu yake bafuni sasa hivi sio tu bafuni anashika sabuni mkono mmoja mkono mmoja akashika simu namwambia sasa naogaje lack mistrust why struggles she goes through a lot of struggles and the last impact is a high rate of mental health challenges ninyi wenyewe ni mashahidi sasa hivi it's a common issue now we are talking about mental health issues kwa takwimu za kuanzia mwaka jana oktoba kwenye ile mental health day ya tarehe 10 mwezi wa 10 na mpaka tumekuja mwaka huu in four people in tanzania one is struggling with mental health challenge why because struggles are real my brothers and sisters we have internal battles we have internal we are aspiring to be leaders we are aspiring for the future and destiny we are aspiring to be somebody when we tell people about, about our story and who do we want to we want to become when we finish our graduation and our degrees you know somebody will say somebody is here a man is here a leader is here but behind the closed doors we have struggles and when these struggles takes us to njia panda the crossroads you become frustrated you become stressed you become depressed and you go to the mental health issues i know you want to be a leader i know you have a lot of desires i know you have a great picture of your life and when you talk about that picture with your brothers and sisters at home and your dad and your mom they say we have a son and we have a daughter but nobody knows that you have struggles behind the doors but jesus knows he is a friend let's learn to roll our cases and bodies because he knows our struggle and he is there for real ready to help us may we all praise and stand he knows our struggles he knows and these struggles are real he knows he knows he is our friend there's no need to lie there's no need to camouflage he knows that behind the closed doors we have a lot of personal struggles we have a lot of personal and relationship struggles nenyo mikono yako juu namna hii shusha kitu chako chini alafu fumba macho yako I want you to think about your life. I want you to contemplate about your future. About you, I want you to think about where you come from with your family. I want you to think about the struggles that you're going through. Mfikiria dakika moja struggles unazopitia. Umenyosha mikono yako vizuri, umefunika macho yako. Fikiria kuhusu struggles unazopitia. Fikiri jinsi ambavyo watu hawajui reality ya maisha yako but you know that you have struggles a lot Sometimes they are heavy to the extent you can't even pray 
You can't even ask God about those struggles. And think, if God gives you a minute, what will you tell him about those struggles? If God gives you a minute, what will you tell him about those struggles? Sometimes they have been so heavy to the extent we have given up. You say, I don't need to pray about this anymore. But remember, there is still a hope of glory. If you have really put a thought on it, Fatia maneno haya machache nitakayosema kama unaweza kusema kutoka kina cha moyo wako. Sema Bwana Yesu. Sema kwa sauti Bwana Yesu. Sema kwa sauti ya juu sema Bwana Yesu. Sema kwa sauti ya juu sema Bwana Yesu. Ninakupenda sana. Umenifia msalabani. Umeniokoa. Damu yako imenisafisha. Damu yako imeshinda dhambi. Damu yako imeshinda struggles ninazo zipitia ambazo watu hawazifahamu ambazo wazazi wangu hawazifahamu ambazo wachungaji wangu hawazifahamu ambazo kila anayenizunguka hazifahamu wewe unazijua nina kukabidhi struggles zangu nina kukabidhi struggles zangu nina kukabidhi struggles zangu beba struggles zangu ninaziweka msalabani niweke huru kuanzia leo niweke huru kuanzia leo niweke huru kuanzia leo struggles za kihisia struggles za kitabia struggles za kiakili katika jina la Yesu damu ya Yesu inisafishe i give you a minute say a word to christ sema kitu kwa kristo sema kitu kwa mungu mwambie mungu kitu kama utapiga kelele kama utaomba kimya kimya baba katika jina la yesu kristo wa nazareti father in the mighty name of jesus i pray for your people and i pray for our struggles father there is no one here who is not facing a struggle there is no one here who will say i am free of struggles i have my struggle and they have their struggle we pray in the name of jesus that father you set us free in the mighty name of jesus you set us free in the mighty name of jesus you set us free from the personal struggle you set us free from relationship struggle you set us free from mind struggle you set us free from mental struggle you set us free from behavioral struggle in the mighty name of jesus from cognitive struggles in the mighty name of jesus set us free set us free rakoria sakapa father we thank you we thank you we thank you We thank you Jesus. I give you glory Jesus. In the mighty name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Give the hand of applause to Jesus. Unaweza ukaketi. Unaweza ukaketi wakati tunapiga makofi. Amen. Mungu akubariki sana. Ukitamani kufuatilia mafundisho ambayo ninafundisha kama nilivyokuambia kwenye YouTube jina langu naitwa Chris Mauki hivyo hivyo kwenye Instagram ni Chris Mauki underscore Chris Mauki kwenye Facebook thread X na mitandao mingine Mungu akubariki sana 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 kwenda kupenya katika personal struggles zako kuwa a leader that you want to be in the name of Jesus Amen